crafty friends it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here with another Doodlebug 1 6x6 paper pad and this time 21 cards. I'm working with the Doodlebug Puppy Love collection and I'm just going to do a quick flip through before I begin trimming up the papers but um, this one was pretty highly requested as well. I think that this one's great because, um, again, I make cards for kids. And so these cards will be well suited to any kid, any age, any gender, all that. So um, I was really looking forward to working with this paper pack. But I did struggle a bit with it. And I'll kind of talk about more of the reasons why throughout the video. So it has a lot of great semi-solid papers. It has some fun cut-aparts. Not all of the cut-aparts were very useful. In particular, the sentiments were really tricky to work with. And that large paper says, uh, home is where your dog is, which I didn't really think worked well for the kind of cards that I make. I think it could be a cute card for um, if you know a dog lover or something like that, but it's just it didn't really work for me. So I did also purchase the stickers, with the cardstock stickers, and I'll be using them today. And I find that I had to really rely on them a lot, actually, in this particular instance. So most of the papers I'm going to cut to a little bit below an A2 size card. So most of the papers are going to be four by five and a quarter. However, that home is where the dog is. I'm going to use the back side, which is this like monochromatic dog print. And I'm going to cut these to three by three. So that way I have some smaller layering pieces to work with. And I believe there are two of each paper in this paper pad. So I was able to get eight pieces of that blue three by three paper. Uh, again, the rest of the paper I am cutting to just below the A2 size card. I like to have a little border. However, as I assemble the cards today, I'm not going to be gluing any of them onto their card bases. Uh, as I record, I kind of just glue everything to the um, panel uh, that, you know, A2, that just below A2 size panel, the four by five and a quarter. And then I just sort of adhere all of the panels onto paper, uh, sorry, onto card bases all at the same time. I find that that just saves a little bit of time for me and making this many cards can be pretty time consuming. So as I go through the papers, I sort of think about which way would I like the papers to be oriented. Do I want to make horizontal cards or vertical cards with them? For instance, the grass paper, I thought that it would look really cute as um, a horizontal card because I could make a little scene with the dogs. And then other cards like the um, Scrabble letters or Scrabble type letters, I thought would make a better vertical card. Um, just because I think that I would be able to have a larger chunk of it uncovered uh, in the design. And so therefore you could kind of see what was going on on the paper a little bit better. These Cutting these to that four by five and a quarter creates a two by six inch strip. And um, then it also creates a three quarter inch by four strip. It was suggested to me that you could cut some of them at the five and a quarter first and then you would get a little bit of variation in terms of the sizes of scraps you get to work with but I really personally prefer working with these sizes so here I'm sorting through my two inch strips my three quarter inch strips and my card bases or, or, or card fronts I guess is the best way to call them um, and so once I have these piles it's going to help me to sort of look around and figure out what I'm going to be doing a little bit more. So I have trimmed up all of the little uh, cut aparts or journaling card type things and I'm sorting them into piles. Piles that I think I could definitely use on a card and piles that I'm not really sure how I'm going to use. There's one that says good times, one says so happy together, one that says good dog. Um, they don't really work for my purposes. Like I'm not going to send a good dog card to somebody. It's great for scrapbooking, but it just doesn't really make sense for card making. And then there's other sentiments like the I rough you uh, for I love you that is like great for cards, but not really for my purposes because these are going to be sent to children in hospitals. So they're not like personal cards that way. Um, and then the sentiments were also quite tricky. There, I mean, this 
the 6x6 paper pads are just the 12x12s shrunk down. And so they're leaning a little bit more towards scrapbooking, I think, with this particular paper pad because there's just a lot of like sayings about having a dog um, or if you were scrapbooking a dog, it would be really great. But then there's also a couple of love sayings, which I don't really need for my purposes and some birthday sayings, which are great. Um, but again, I don't need for my purposes because they don't ask for birthday cards uh, with, to the organization that I donate to. However, maybe your organization that you like to donate to does, and then that's awesome. So I cut all that up, separated them, found a handful I'm definitely wanting to use, and I'm going to start assembling some easy cards to sort of just get me started, get the juices flowing. I thought these cute little two-by-two two puppies fit nicely onto the three-by-three three squares, uh, creates a little layer there, and then I can try to figure out how to put them on a card base. And I decided actually that in this case, I would just pick some of the uh, busier, more involved papers and place the little layered dog on top of it, figuring that that would allow those papers to shine a little bit more, like particularly the Scrabble one, which if you covered it with a lot of different layers, you wouldn't appreciate the paper as much. So this worked out really well to do a simple uh, layering on and I just sort of put that three by three square in uh, the top two thirds and left that little third of the bottom. I did the same thing with this really busy but super cute uh, heart paper. The hearts all have different patterns from the set so again it is really busy but um, I thought that in this particular instance being paired with those that you know blue layer kind of helped tone it down a bit. And so I'm going to put those off to the side for now and again try to work with some of the cut aparts to create a few more simple cards. It, again, I thought that um, when working with this paper pad, since at first I was a little bit intimidated thinking I don't know what I'm going to do because there's all these sayings that aren't really relevant, there's all these cut aparts that I can't really use, I was feeling like I, don't, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to be successful with this particular paper pad. So I wanted to make some easy cards to kind of get my mojo going, get me motivated, and so that's kind of how these first couple of very simple cards came about. I, you know, didn't bother to try to come up with super fancy designs or anything for them. Also, again, I think that this paper pad is well suited to a child of any age or gender, but I do think that um, it tends to be that a lot of the cards that people make and send are a little bit more girly because a lot of scrapbooking products and paper crafting products tend towards that. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I kept the designs a little bit cleaner and simpler so again that they would appeal to everyone. I am working with this dog in the park scene as well and I really wanted to pick something a little bit less busy for this one. The other two, it kind of worked to use a busy background paper uh, because they were such simple images of the dogs and had a lot of um, solid behind them, like the one where the little doggy was on the green pillow. It's just a brown background, so I could more easily pair it with a busy paper. Here, it's a little park scene, so it's got a lot going on already. And therefore, I wanted to pair it with something that was a little bit more uh, toned down. I also wanted to be careful about adding something that was too similar that would make it essentially blend in. Like I didn't want to use a light green or light blue uh, strip across the bottom because I felt like then, again, the park scene would sort of blend in with it because it had its own light green and uh, light blue as the backgrounds. So that's part of the reason that I put that little orange strip there, but also just for a little bit of added interest, that orange strip is made from one of the three and a quarter by four inch strips that were created as I cut card bases. And so this, at this point, I was thinking, Ugh, these cards are turning out kind of boring, and I need to do at least some little things to make them more interesting. 
And that's when I decided to pull out the foam tape and the journaling pen. They aren't crazy interesting embellishments in some ways, like they're not all sparkly and glitter and all that kind of stuff, but a lot of sparkle and glitter isn't great for the organization that I donate my cards to. So I try to do, I, I do try to keep my embellishments a little more simple. So, or uh, a little bit less hazardous, I suppose, <laughs> because glitter can be dangerous for, for children with particular um, lung conditions. So I can use foam tape and I can use journaling pens with no worries or concerns. And so I said, let me pull out my trusty journaling pen and foam tape and get to work. So I'm taking my journaling pen and adding faux stitching where you're basically just drawing little lines that look like stitching lines, but are way easier and faster. I used to stitch with embroidery floss a lot on my cards. They really like the look, but it just takes up so much time. And uh, once I discovered that if I did some practicing, I could do all right with uh, just some faux stitching, I, I really fell in love and I started using it a lot. And people had asked last time oh, if they felt like they could not you know, do the faux stitching. And my biggest recommendation is just to practice on scrap paper. You know, if you're watching TV, talking on the phone, I don't know, whatever, like sort of activity where your hands are free, uh, practice making those little even dash lines. And over time, it will become a lot easier. I've been doing it for probably like 10 plus years at this point. So it just kind of comes to me, but you definitely want to practice first. So in these two cards here, I'm using my last two little cut aparts that I knew would definitely, definitely work. And I wanted a way to create a slightly different layout because I've done a lot with the two inch strips and you know, you kind of probably have some ideas for that. But what to do with all of these three and a quarter by four inch strips that are created. And they actually pair pretty well with the two by three journaling cards, which are the like longer ones. Doodlebug typically has a sheet that has six two by three cut aparts. And so you're going to get those with every collection. So this is a card that you could make no matter which Doodlebug collection you're working with. But I think that you could similarly create, even if you like, you know, not all paper pads have these cute cut aparts. However, knowing the measurements, you could make your own two by three inch rectangle and stamp your own image on it and then pop it up over these strips that you would have created by cutting your six by six paper pads apart. I know that a lot of people are saying that they really want to try to use some of these ideas to create their, you know, to use up their own paper pads. However, not all paper pads have these same doodle bug elements, but I do definitely encourage you to think about, you know, if I'm making a card that's using one of the two by two squares, and your paper pad doesn't have two by two squares, you could create a two by two square with a stamped image and then do everything else with your, you know, regular paper pad, do all the other cuts, but save those little panels instead of using the cut aparts in the Doodlebug collection, you know, create your own stamped, print some images out and things like that. You can find printed, printable journaling cards or cut aparts online that you can use. And so just encourage you to kind of try that. Here, again, I was trying to do something a little bit different. I told you I really struggled with this paper pad. This is the, you know, after I made that last set of cards with the strips, I stopped and went to Pinterest because I was like totally out of ideas. And I didn't expect to necessarily like find an exact card to replicate per se, but I just wanted to like see a bunch of different cards and think like what little interesting elements can I pull out and the one thing that stuck was the idea of making something diagonal and part of me was like that should have been obvious like instead of painting your paper straight try just mixing it up with an angle but it wasn't <laughs> and so uh, you know I was lucky to I, I, as much as I don't like to particularly say copy a card from another blog or something that I see on Pinterest or Facebook, I do like to think like, what do I like about that card? And how can I incorporate one part of that card into my own card? So that's what I did here. I made the diagonal. I took the two inch strip. I cut, uh, I think it's a half inch off of it and turned it over. So it was orange on one side and brown on the other. 
I cut the two inch strip with a little uh, to a one and a half inch, turned over the half inch part, and then glued them on a diagonal and trimmed them off. And then I took one of the uh, three by three squares I still had left since I'd only used four of them and I have four more. And this is when I had to pull out the stickers because I am all out of cut aparts. They, the ones that are left just don't really make sense uh, f for the kind of cards that I'm making anyway. And so I was really happy to have the stickers. But again, I could have just stamped some images and used those instead of having the stickers. But I think that it's kind of fun to see what you could do with a coordinating collection instead of having to, um, to just be able to like purchase two things and make a bunch of cards is, is pretty cool. So, um, I took advantage of the, the sticker pack in this instance. And as I've been making these cards, I've really enjoyed it, but it's also, it's not using up my stash. Like, I don't know about you, but I have a ton of ribbon and washi tape and, you know, enamel dots and stickers and like so much stuff that I need to use up. And some of it I can't use, but, uh, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to include buttons, for instance, because if the child pulls them off, it could be a choking hazard. So one thing I knew I could use was ribbon. And I know that you can't, like, I mean, I just used a random scrap of green polka dot ribbon on this card, and you may not have green polka dot ribbon, but... You know, if you're, you could totally make this same exact card with a strip of green paper, green cardstock, um, you know, leave off this green strip and it really doesn't change anything. Um, it will still be a super cute card without it, but it was just one way for me to pull a little bit of something out of my stash and use it up. So I used up a relatively small piece of like 10 or 12 inch green ribbon, you know, um, but still, Nice to be able to incorporate little bits like that as you're making a whole bunch of cards. And again, I'm using that diagonal. I thought that was a fun idea on one card. And this time, instead of cutting off a half inch strip, I'm just using the full two inch strip, gluing it down diagonally, turning the card over, trimming off the edges. Then I am adhering my green polka dot ribbon down and I'm going to tape the edges of the green polka dot ribbon to the back. And then another little, um, three by three square is going to get a puppy sticker and then add that on top of the diagonal there. I'm also adding a little bit of the faux stitching detail. Each of the times that I am working with the stickers, I'm trying to use a bit of the smaller stickers as well, or some of the scene building stickers instead of just using the doggies, because I think that the dogs are really easy to use because they're so cute. But then if you use up all the dogs, you're left with like a bunch of hearts and bones and, you know, random stuff at the end and no real way to use those up. And then they sit in a drawer for like five years. Ask me how I know because <laughs> I have sticker packs that I sat with for so long with like, you know, three more little stickers on it. And you need to sometimes just let them go, but also just use them as you're going. Like, you know, you're already using the dog. How can you throw in that bone or, or tennis ball or whatever so that you don't have those little bits of sticker left? Anyway, getting a bit off track, but I hope that's helpful because I'm sure some of you have some stash problems like I do. Well, not problems because I love my stash, but you know, it needs to also be shared with the world, which is a part of my goal with creating these, um, these paper pad videos and also with donating my cards. Part of the point of it all is to use my stash to bring some joy to the world. Here I am assembling another sticker card. In this case, I turned over one of the journaling cards. It's one of the, um, I think it's the I rough you I'm using. And I couldn't use it for my purposes, so I just turned it over and used the plaid pattern on the back to have a little area to place my sticker. And I also paired it with one of the sentiments that I wound up using. I used very few sentiments from the paper pad. I used the woof woof, which again is not really a sentiment, <laughs> uh, hello, and then a you make me smile. And the you make me smile is the one that I'm using right now. But Again, a lot of them just kind of wound up in the bag for the giveaway, and hopefully one of you guys can use them a little bit more. I'm sure you guys will be wanting to 
make a few more birthday cards or something like that with uh, with your stash. So anyway, two more simple cards by simply turning over that cut apart and using the backside instead. This time I didn't use a banner on the two inch strip that I used, um, just partly to mix it up a bit. At this point, I am all out of those standard A2-ish sized ones. I don't have any more four by five and a quarter card backgrounds left. All I have is two inch strips. So I'm gonna take these two inch strips and turn them in to four by five and a quarter pieces by putting them right next to each other and basically gluing them together. I cover the seam with one of the two inch, one of the other two inch strips. So I'm gluing together two two inch strips and then covering them with a different two inch strip. So it looks like I've made another piece of pattern paper. You know, it looks like a complete piece of pattern paper, but of course it isn't. Um, and here I'll trim that down to again the five and a quarter because right now those are still the six inch measurement and I'll have that little bit of scrap possibly to use later on. And I have the backs of those two that I didn't really think worked. Um, again, there's the I rough you and love at first sight, like fur, F-U-R. Um, however, I did think I could probably use these man's best friends one, like if I put a dog down and wrote and then use the man's best friend um, one. It wouldn't really be a sentiment per se, but it would just be like a cute dog card. And then on the inside, um, I glued dog jokes to all of these. That's something that I wanted to mention. Uh, you do have to write a message inside the cards to donate them to Cards for Hospitalized Kids. And on their website, they give you some suggestions about great things to say inside the cards. However, I um, I don't know who thought of this because I used to do this with my mom. We when I lived in Jersey with her, um, we would craft together and we would you know come up with a big pack of cards to send out together uh, to the organizations. But now I make my own boxes. We started putting jokes inside the cards. So rather than just, you know, an, a nice message like stay strong, be brave, something like that, we included a joke. I figure, you know, yes, hopefully the card makes them smile, but then a cute little joke, hopefully again, just to make them smile. Because this is, for me, it's all about spreading joy, love, happiness with my hobby. And so I include a little joke and a message on the inside, and then I sign it, um, as it mentions on the website, just sign with your first name and where you're from. Uh, some kids receive multiple cards, so it's kind of cool to, you know, see what different places around the country they've received cards from. So I always like to include my state. You don't want to be too specific um, about where you live, but just like, you know, signing from your state is uh, usually enough. And it can be kind of like a fun game to collect cards from different places for some of the kids because a lot of them will be you know, unfortunately, they'll be in the hospital for a while and we'll probably have the chance to be blessed with a few cards. But, um, you know, anyway, <laughs> I am making my very last card right now. And this is my 21st card. I, uh, I did not do well with this paper pad. <laughs> I ran out so fast and I've already added so much extra stuff. I've used so many of the stickers already. It, this paper pad was just such a challenge for me. I think the card's are pretty cute but I'm telling you this last card I was trying to dig deep and it was not working I don't really like the card I'm gonna be honest with you guys I was trying something out I had all these strips left and I thought well maybe if I just layer a bunch of strips together in a sort of collage way um, that'll be kind of cute but it I don't know I maybe it was the particular way that I chose to layer them. Maybe if I had cut some of them as banners, that would have helped a little bit. But um, I've cut it down now to that five and a quarter size. And I'm just taking all the little strips that are left on my desk and trying to layer them up in a way that is pleasing to the eye. And I am just struggling, struggling so much trying to figure this out. Because as you can see, I sort of just layer paper on and then take it off and then move it and then layer more paper on and take it off and move it and I eventually settle on something because I don't want to waste it. I think that, um, you know, it'll still be kind of cute <laughs> and once there's a joke inside, it will still hopefully brighten someone's day. I'll have to put a particularly funny joke inside this 
card because the outside is a little bit uh, underwhelming and it doesn't have a cute puppy on it because I'm pretty sure at this point I don't even have any puppy stickers left because this paper pad was just the so many of the cut apart images didn't have little doggies on them and the little doggies are so cute in the set there were so many word cut aparts I wish there was a few more doggy ones but like again I just I don't have anything left all I have is teeny tiny scraps and you'll see in the end at the end of the video I'll kind of just show you but anyway um I'm going to struggle with this card for a few minutes and well, in that time I want to remind you there's going to be a giveaway always I'm going to give away the little bits of cut aparts that I have left and the stickers that I have left. I know that's a little pitiful this time. And so that's why I'm going to be sure to include some extra doodlebug washi for you. So you'll be getting some doodlebug washi tape and um, a bunch of really great sentiments. There, there really was a ton of sentiments that I think other people would find useful in this paper pad and they'll all be included. Uh, but I am, I'll continue to work on these six by six paper pad cards. I have a few more left from my original haul, but I will be showing a second little haul because I went and purchased the new Doodlebug paper pads. There was three brand new ones. Um, there's At The Zoo, and then Dragon Tales and Fairy Tales, and I know that um, oh, I lied. There is a dog left. I couldn't figure out how to use a dog. I remember this part now. I was trying desperately to use one of those journaling cards. Because last time, I had used a journaling card and I covered it up. Like, I covered up the weird saying. on Like, it was H2O. Because it was under the pack, And I covered it up with a mermaid. And it looked so cute. And I was like, maybe I can do it again. And I could. <laughs> so, um, there is one green doggy left. But he didn't really work out well. Because the, the background paper that I'm working on is green. So anyway, I have those three paper pads. And you can leave a comment on this video. Or on the haul video. Letting me know which of those three you'd like to see next. Or I still have the goal. Which is the soccer one. Um, and as you can see there, those were like the little tiny, tiny, tiny scraps that I had left of paper. There was like nothing left. There's like very few stickers left too. Um, but there is Rainbow Washi from Doodlebug and some other fun stuff that will be in the prize. So be sure to leave a comment. But you can let me know which of the next three you'd like to work with or check out that haul video. Um, I have the goal and I have one more uh paper pad from doodlebug still to work with and then i'm going to try to work with some paper pads from other companies too let me know is there another paper pad company that makes six by six pads that you'd like to see me try to do one of these videos with uh leave a comment and uh yeah any other i'd love to hear from you guys i really have enjoyed i try to respond as as much as i can to all the comments that you guys have left and i hope that this continues to be inspiring. So many of you have told me that you want to start donating your cards. And it's, I just, it's warms my heart that like other people are like learning about how to donate and wanting to do that because of these videos, because that's what I've always done. I've, for years and years and years, I've donated my cards. And so to kind of now be able to spread that to other people is super fun. So. Anyway, that is it for my video today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials and more 6x6 pad tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. All my links are in the video description below, including my critter group. So if you love to share critter cards, be sure to join us over on Facebook. I uh, link to my class, which is also about working with critters, because uh, as you can see, I super love little critter uh, crafts. So that is it. And thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome, awesome day. Bye.